Come into my kitchen. I'm going to show you a quicker way to make delicious, fresh, squeaky cheese curds. Before beginning any cheese making recipe, it's important to sanitize and sterilize all of your equipment and surfaces. Stage your equipment on dedicated towels for cheese making and remove any hand jewelry. Once it was cool enough to touch, I prepped my cheesecloth for the draining stage. Sometimes dried flakes of milk can be on the surface of the container, so it's important to wipe that down as well. For this recipe, you'll need cultured buttermilk, plain yogurt with live cultures, and reduced fat milk. These ingredients can be found in your local grocery store. Any milk will do, but reduced fat milk should help make the curd squeakier. Just make sure the milk is not ultra pasteurized. Add one cup of room temperature buttermilk to the milk. Add a quarter cup of room temperature plain yogurt. Heat the milk to 98 degrees Fahrenheit. Most home cheesemakers purchase these ingredients online. They'll need to be diluted in two tablespoons of water. This recipe uses a half teaspoon each of calcium chloride, annatto, and rennet. The annatto is optional, but it will give your curds a beautiful orange hue. I'll leave a link to these in the description box. They're affiliate links, which means I make a commission if you purchase. If you're a fan of the show, you may notice that I am using twice the amount of rennet than I normally do for my aged cheeses. That's because I'm trying to force rapid coagulation. Normally, that amount of rennet, which is double of what I normally use, would produce a rubbery curd. And for that amount, it could affect aging and cause the cheese to become bitter. Fortunately though, this is a fresh cheese and cheese curds are supposed to be a little rubbery anyway. So I think this will turn out perfectly. I turn off the heat when the mixture has reached 98 degrees Fahrenheit. Then I add the diluted ingredients one at a time, stirring for one minute for each addition. Anato is made from the seeds of an achiote tree and in these amounts has no discernible flavor. Ooh, pretty. The rennet is always added last and should be stirred for no longer than a minute. I cover the pot and let it rest for 10 to 15 minutes. I can see the curd pulling away from the sides of the pot, but I'm checking for a clean break anyway. That looks good, so now I'll cut the curds. For the next five minutes, I'm allowing the cut curds to rest so they can heal. Then I stir the curds gently and occasionally for five minutes. And then I very slowly increase the heat over the next 15 minutes to 102 degrees Fahrenheit while stirring gently and constantly. I'm placing another pot underneath the colander to catch the whey because I'll need it for the next steps to keep the curds warm. And then I pour the curds into the colander so they can drain. I create a pouch by tying a knot at the top of the cheesecloth. And I use a towel to keep the curds warm while they rest for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, I checked the curds and they were really too soft. 
so I hung them for another 10 minutes to drain out more moisture. Ah, much better. The curd mass needs to be firm enough to slice in half. And then I place them back into the colander, one on top of the other. For the next steps, I need a zipper bag. I always use bags from an unopened box, so I know they're sanitary. And then I fill the bag with warm water, which is about 100 degrees. And then I place the bag on top of the curds and cover the whole business with a towel. And I let the curds cheddar for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, I flip the slabs over. I repeat this process five to six times until the slabs are the consistency of cooked chicken breast. The cheddaring process will take about an hour, which is about half the time of a normal cheddar process. The slabs are transferred to a cutting board, so I can cut them into smaller pieces. I aim for about one inch long by a half inch wide. Or maybe a little bigger than that. The next step is to round the edges of the cut curds so I'm placing them back under the warm water for 10 minutes. This is helpful for two reasons. If the salt is absorbed immediately after the slab is cut, the curds can absorb it too quickly, which creates a rush of whey expelling from the curds. I learned that in cheese school. Now that the edges are rounded, I'm adding one and a half teaspoons of salt. It also helps the curds to look like, well, cheese curds. I think I want to taste one right now. Salty, tangy, and squeaky. I nailed it. They're delicious. I want to show you these gorgeous curds. They are almost a week old and the color has deepened considerably. They will hold their squeak for up to 48 hours at room temperature, but after that, they should be stored in the refrigerator for safety and they can stay there for up to a week. I really like the squeak though, so let me show you a little trick. If you heat them in the microwave, the squeak will come back and they are so delicious when they are warm. Give this recipe a try. It is so much faster than traditional recipes and the results are amazing. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate your support and we will see you in the next episode. So good.